I'm going to be discussing the final scene of Agnes Varda's final film, Faces Places, which she directed with JR. The very last sequence of the scene, which is the slow pan that matches the pan in. So we had the we had the train that was going left to right, and now the very last, so like, sort of like a bookend, the last shot is, is a very similar horizontal shot that moves from left to right, where we're seeing this beautiful lake, and they're having the conversation about what happened that day. And then a classic shot of this film, the two of them in the landscape paired, so so unequally him tall her short and then these just gorgeous like narrative film shot reverse shot conversation of the of what they the meaning of that interaction is which is what the meaning of the film is and um, there's no way that that can't be staged because it's been shot like a narrative film and gr says to her you know, why did he why did he do that to you? Did he want to hurt you? Or was he challenging the narrative structure of your film? Now, she says, our film, is it a prank? No, you were writing, so he wrote too. And the two team came together. And she says, I have a very mixed feeling about that. And she's, again, performing real emotion, but perhaps not about Jean-Luc Godard perhaps about her relationship with JR. This is where he says to her, what can I do for you? They've set up the whole movie for this to be the end. The camera moves so that it's not from her point of view, but from our point of view, or a direct point of view shot, and you look straight at him and he's blurred. And she makes the last line, I can see you. And, and in fact, it's the second to last line because the last line is, shall we look at the lake? And then we see them in that gorgeous shot Little badness, big JR, big world. The tree is hovering over them on the left side of the screen, the right side is open, and it actually transforms into a very beautiful signature animation and is the closing shot of the film. And so, even though it's sort of sad, it's a honest representation of JR and Agnes's philosophy about the beauty of the journey and not the end of the quest. And this is a film that ends by saying that is what cinema does for us. It allows us to see each other. It allows the two of them to get to know each other in this exchange. It allows them to see other human beings, real human beings in France along the journey. And that is the gift of cinema. And that is the gift of documentary cinema because documentary cinema engages real people, not artificial people, not scripted people, not um, invented people, and that they end the film knowing each other better. They've gone on what we all want in our life journey, to get to be known and to know somebody better. It's very beautiful, very quiet ending. And to my mind, it is only more poignant because we understand that it's scripted because we understand that these two great artists have figured this out together and they've used Jean-Luc Godard as a kind of foil to be able to express this beautiful thing between the two of them and about their own journey. It's also a overt nod to what I have written about and made, which is a genre called fake documentary. So in the book that I wrote with Jesse Lerner called F is Phony, Fake Documentary and Truth's Undoing, we say that a fake documentary is something that looks like a documentary, but it will expose itself as being fake at some time. And if you're watching very carefully, you will see that, that it's exposed as a fake. And when we talk about fake documentary, we're talking about Spinal Tap, for instance, or The Blair Witch Project, for instance, or my own film, The Watermelon Woman. Someplace in the text, what looks like a documentary will reveal itself to you as being fake. And that strange modulation between, I thought it was a real documentary, I thought it was about reality, I thought this was a true tale, and the fact that it's been narrativized or scripted or performed, that oscillation between the two is actually very interesting to us as cinema viewers. At the very beginning I, of all this, I did make you a promise, remember? I did promise that for one hour, I tell you only the truth.
That hour, ladies and gentlemen, is over. For the past 17 minutes, I've been lying my head off. And I had said earlier in my discussion that that's something that Agnes Varda does very well. She oscillates between imagination and the real, between realism and narrative, between acting and documentary, between staging and chance. I believe that this film shows that it's scripted, this moment. Merci. C'est gentil. Je savais pas que tes yeux ils étaient aussi clairs. Moi, je te vois pas très bien, mais je te vois. On regarde le lac. What was interesting about the sequence where she is so sad when she gets to the door and he doesn't arrive, that there's no payoff, right? That the thing that the whole movie is leading to doesn't work. That is also the end of Watermelon Woman. And so maybe part of why I recognized it or thought I recognized it is because I made a movie that ends that way. There's the character in The Watermelon Woman, whose name is Cheryl, who's played by the director Cheryl Dunier, has been looking for Faye Richards, The Watermelon Woman, or the whole movie. And at the very end of the film, she has going to meet a woman who was, this, was Faye Richards' lover. And she's going to have an interaction with her. And at last, it's a payoff, right? At last, all of this research that she's done is going to come to a conclusion. And she gets to the door and... Jean-Luc! Jean-Luc. Have you looking for Miss Young? She's not there. Yeah, I was supposed to meet her today for lunch. C'est quoi qui a écrit, là? Ça, c'est un message codé. Oh, no, the ambulance came yesterday and took her off to the hospital. No! Yeah. No, what happened? De la part de Jean-Luc. À la ville de Douarnenez, c'est là où on allait manger, c'était un petit restaurant. She'd been having, like, heart pains all this week, so I had to go over there and, you know, I had to call the ambulance for her. Et quand, quand Jacques est mort, c'est juste ça qui m'a envoyé comme mot. À, à la ville de Douarnenez. Yeah, I, I got my bags and stuff. Okay. Look, could you take these? No, that's Oh, come on, please. Have you ever tasted green to smoke turkey wings? Quand je pense que j'ai été à sa pâtisserie favorite, acheter des petites brioches pour les lui apporter. So, I staged, you know, our movie also ends that way, with a door that opens or doesn't open and the person not being there in the whole movie's been that way. So, it was an interesting parallel and it's why I think that it's faked and it's also why i am sure that most people have read it as real because you want the search to work that's what motivates journeys that's what motivates cinema that's what motivates this quest that i've seen is the film is about being finding the other seeing the other and having the other seeing you so when it ends in that disappointment it's what's moved us forward and i also suggest that, that it is then that we realize that it was never the quest for Godard that mattered. It was the relationship and the quest between the two of them, their friendship, that is J.R. and Agnes, Barda, and that the journey has allowed them to know and love each other. And there is no one documentary that has all the pieces of the puzzle. It's just some pieces. And you have to invent, to understand, to imagine the rest. There is no truth, you know that.